Los geht's. Okay. <laughs> so if you clicked on this video, you're probably thinking of visiting Valencia, or are you just being an armchair tourist and want to see the sights that Valencia has to offer? Or maybe you're following my channel of uh, my van life adventures uh, traveling through Europe. In any case, um, I am Jack and I would like to show you my Valencia. I have now stopped here for a couple of weeks. A couple of days turned into a couple of weeks, into two months. I'm loving it here and I would like to share, well, five things that I like about Valencia. And in the end, it was difficult, but I also found five things I hate about Valencia. Come along. <laughs> So this is the bridge that I usually take to get into Valencia. And at the end of the bridge, I always have a choice. Turn left towards the more modern side of the town, which is the city of sciences and arts. Or turn right, and that takes me to, well, the old town, basically, with the more picturesque uh, architecture and, and history. Today, I think I'll turn left and right because I want to show a bit of Valencia, my Valencia to you. So um, I hope you enjoyed the ride with me and come along. It is my Like with every prime real estate, it's all about location, location, location. And Valencia is perfectly located on the east coast of Spain, south of Barcelona and east of Madrid, the capital, on the coastline. So it's easily accessible to go to the beaches, uh, Patacona Beach, Malvarosa Beach, or El Saler, or any of the other beaches. They're really nice, clean, sandy beaches. And they're just like a, an easy bike ride or tram ride away. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually standing in a river, the river of Turia in the middle of uh, Valencia. And as you can see, it's no longer a river. After the flood in 1957, they decided to change or redirect the river, let's put it that way, to the ocean and to, through a whole network of irrigation underneath uh, Valencia, there is now water aplenty. Uh, because I told you before, I think, that it rarely rains in Valencia and nevertheless, it's a very, very green city because of that irrigation system underneath the city. Now, this uh, Turia Gardens, the gardens of Turia, go from east to west. So you can go from Old Town all the way to the uh, City of Sciences and Arts, the modern part that I mentioned before. So, although I can never um, compare Berlin with Valencia, but they say of Berlin that it's a collection of small villages. And um, I think, to be quite honest, it can be said about Valencia as well. They've got all these areas that you can go and visit. And each area has a tourist attraction in some sort of uh, form, be it a cathedral, a castle a church or some monument. So it is worthwhile checking all these different areas in Valencia.
I did a whole video on the oranges of Valencia, which are famous worldwide, um, which I will link up there so you can click on that if you want to. But that leads me to uh, my next chapter of Valencia. It's the food. I mean, it is, well, it is Spain, of course. They love their fish. And being so close to the Mediterranean, of course, the fish is fresh. when we're in Spain. We all know the tapas, the little dishes that you share with each other. And as a solo traveler, that's pretty awesome because I don't have to share with anybody. And today I'm eating a paella. And paella in Valencia, you always have to be two people to order it. And so I invited a guest and today we ordered paella, the real Valencian one. Well, rumor has it that actually it is the Valencians who invented the paella. And we all think of paella as with seafood, but the Valencian one is with uh, chicken and rabbit. And when we're talking about paella, it's actually not, a, not the rice dish itself. It's actually the pan it's made in that is the paella. So there you go, I learned something new. And for dessert, I'm gonna have an horchata, which is a milk drink based on tiger nuts. Let's see how that goes. So, this is made out of some sort of nuts. It's not a milk, it's a nut milk, obviously, and it's a local delicacy. Um, I've already given it a try. I'm not a fan, I can tell you that in, beforehand. So you get a little farton with it, uh, which is a piece of dough, and you dip it. And not sure why you have to dip this, but hey, we'll try it again. See if I like it this time. It's a very sweet drink. Um, I'm Belgian, so I prefer chocolate milk any time. Um, but it, it's growing on me. It's not as bad as my first taste. But it's... Um, I had never heard of it. Basically, pine nuts or tiger nuts or some kind of nuts, they extract and make this into a milk. It's, it's a local delicacy. I have to drink this now. <clears throat> so, if you're in Valencia, you have to try it. There you go, that's all I can say. Try it. Maybe you're a fan. Now, Valencia is also a university city, and uh, you can actually notice that because of the, the amount of young people that I see in town, um, and also the young people that help in restaurants and cafes. So um, it gives the town or the city a, uh, a nice energy, a good vibe. At night, that means also a lot of noise, a lot of partying going on with these young people. I learned one word in Spanish, botellon, which means that, you know, they call on Twitter or on Facebook and they gather at, in a park and they buy their booze in a supermarket and then they meet up and make noise and make a party, a cheaper version than going to a disco or to a rave. And... Uh, <laughs> That could be rather um, noisy. I've experienced that more than once now in town. So, you know, young people, well, I was, <laughs> I was young once myself, so I'm not gonna judge. Um, you see, 
You see them everywhere. You see them, you know, working at the bars, busking or waiting on you. But also in the morning they have to go to classes. So it's kind of busy as well then. And I'm not sure if that is uh, because of the student population, but unlike America where there's a Starbucks on every corner or a McDonald's, um, there seems to be a, a CrossFit or a gym on every corner in Valencia. Now, I don't know if the young people inspire the old people to keep fit or if it's the older generation that brings it on to the next generation to keep fit. But I must admit, a lot of people do a lot of sports here. Generally, I would say it's a healthy city. I don't see a lot of overweight people here. I see a lot of people moving all the time, jogging, working out, walking. It is definitely a place where outdoor living trumps indoor living. And to be honest, as a homebody, uh, I find it very, very uh, invigorating to be outside all the time, active all the time. And uh, you can actually see and feel that in this city. We also have to talk about the weather because, um, again, perfectly located, very mild winters and hot summers with extremes maybe in August, July, August, but otherwise it's always a very pleasant 20 degrees, 25 degrees centigrade. Even in January and February you can expect up, up to 20 degrees. As I've mentioned earlier on, it doesn't rain a lot. And as you can see, it is still very green through that uh, irrigation system that they built in the 60s. But it doesn't really rain a lot. So it's a perfect climate, I would say. Well, after the weather, I think we need to talk about the traffic. 
So I passed the Barcelona, remember, and I really hated it instantly because the traffic was murder. Uh, let's call it murder. Hey, um, it was really bad. It was really busy. Uh, now, uh, having lived in Berlin and in London, I know, you know, traffic in, in capital cities are pretty horrendous, to be quite honest. So I was expecting the worst for Valencia. And I have to admit, the traffic is really, really easy going here. It's not as busy. Um, OK, it's not uh, the capital of Spain. It's the third largest city of Spain, after all. I mean, it's a very relaxed atmosphere, I would say, in traffic. And I haven't heard anybody hoot yet. So I think, um, you know, they're very chill. Um, there are a couple of things that I find strange. Uh, first of all, the roundabouts. The roundabouts are really weird because they've got traffic lights on the roundabout, which is new to me. So you could say that Valencia is a very bike-friendly city. There's uh, dedicated bike lanes throughout the whole town, throughout the whole city. Even the whole coastline has a dedicated uh, bike lane. You know what? I filmed my bike ride from Malvarosa Beach to Patacona Beach. It's about a six minute bike ride, really. And I filmed it 4K. So um, I'll post that later and I'll already link it in the description or up here somewhere. So that if you want to have a look uh, what that looks like uh, on a Sunday afternoon, then uh, please check that out. Like I said, um, very bike friendly. Bikes tend to have a priority here in Valencia, so um, you feel safe here, so that's good. Like I said, there's uh, dedicated bike lanes, and if there's not a dedicated bike lane, then uh, you uh, you can just use the roads, and then traffic, you know, cars, trucks uh, will have to stay behind you. Now, if you didn't bring your own bike... There are rental bikes throughout town, so it is not really that difficult to find one But for now, I'm going to jump on the bike, take you through a little tour through town and walk you through or bike you through town. I'll see you in a minute. And I think I promised at the beginning of this video also five things that I don't like about Valencia. Um. Excuse me, I'm taping here. Well, I'll try it anyway. I think in the whole of Spain, for the 74 million people in Spain, there are about 9 to 10 million dogs, which you can actually, um, you can actually witness that in Valencia. It feels like every man has a dog, every woman has a dog, every child has a dog. And those dogs... And they... Those dogs aren't always very well behaved. Or well, maybe it's the owners, to be quite honest. Um, there's a lot of dog barking going on. Continuous dog barking. That you think, like, don't these, don't the owners of these dogs hear this? And then um, there's a lot of poo around as well. Again, 
it's not a dog problem, it's an owner problem. And, and once in a while you will experience a rather nasty smell in town and you just wonder, what is that? Well, that's because they are spraying the fields behind me with some... Uh, um, I don't know if it's artificial or natural manures, but um, it is quite pungy. And when the wind blows in the wrong direction, you will smell it in town. But don't be worried, it'll be all over soon. So, Spanish people are loud. There, I said it. I don't know what you're going to say. You're probably saying, oh, yep, yeah, some Americans and Germans or in the Dutch are loud as well. It's a different kind of loudness. I, I don't think they understand the concept of noise. They just don't hear noises, be it uh, themselves when they're talking in a group or just in a couple, or whether it's dogs barking. They just do not get the concept, I think even with my noise cancellation headphones. Now, another thing that we might not be accustomed to, but uh, the Spanish still take very seriously, is their siesta time. So don't be surprised if you're in town one day or one afternoon and most of the shops are closed. Well, not most of them, but, you know, a fair amount of shops will be closed between 1.30 and 5.30. That's because that's their classical siesta time. So don't be surprised when you find a couple of closed doors. Perdón, señorita. Perdón, señorita. Say, I speak. Hablo. 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 I speak English. Hablo inglés. I speak Spanish. Habla. Hablo. Hablo español. Hablo español. 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 She asked, do you speak Spanish? Habla. Habla español. Habla español. Habla español. Habla español. I don't speak Spanish. No hablo español. 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 How do you say I understand Spanish? Entiendo español. Entiendo español. <sighs> okay. So, um I've been told all my life that Spanish is actually an easy language to learn and I find it particularly difficult. So I don't know what's up with that or whether they've been lying to me all my life, but um, I find it very difficult. And um, not only do I find talking Spanish difficult, it's also difficult to communicate with the people in Valencia because their English isn't very good either which I perfectly understand because Spanish TV is only dubbed. Music is mainly Spanish as well. So why would you learn English? Uh, even young people, I've noticed, don't speak English that well. So, um, you know, and I am a guest in their country, so I would like to learn some Spanish. I even tried, you know, with the teacher. I've tried these apps, you know, ever since um, Instagram knows that I'm in Spain, I can keep on getting advertising for um, AI apps that will teach me Spanish in three days and all that stuff. It's not working. I don't know why and uh, I find it extremely difficult and I always thought like, oh, it's an easy language. But it is a language like any other language, full of exceptions and irregular verbs. So there you go. And I think that the way people respond to me speaking English is that they kind of get into a panic as well. And when I ask them to just, you know, um, hablo despacio, as in like, you know, can you please talk more slowly? They just start raising their voice and start shouting at me, which 
obviously doesn't help the communication at all. I just want them to break up their little sentences. And once I can hear a broken up sentence, I probably will understand it. It's just that they don't have that concept of like, oh, I need to speak more slowly and I have to pronounce better. Unfortunately, but um, there you go. Um, I... I will persist in learning Spanish and uh, next year when I come back, I will be able to have a proper conversation. Mm -hmm.